welcome back to a new post today and today let's speak about a very very important uh, project that was launched during uh, india's presidency of uh, g20 and uh, that project now is in discussion uh, with the uh, prime minister of greece visiting us who inaugurated the ricena dialogue in india recently and he spoke to india that we should begin the uh, project uh, in spite of the troubles that are going on in the west asian region uh, he was talking about the indian middle east economic corridor which is seen as a competitor to the belt and road initiative of china and which is going to have a gateway for india's exports all the way to europe so greece prime minister was here on kairos mitsotakis was here uh, to inaugurate the vice ricena dialogue and he told prime minister narendra modi that we should go ahead with the india middle east economic corridor it is a project that was launched by india during uh, india's g20 summit in new delhi in last year september 2023 and the mou founding members of this initiative are india european union france germany italy mauritius uae and saudi arabia however this project is facing hurdles because of the israeli and the gaza war uh, hamas war that is going on so this uh, india middle east economic corridor uh, india middle east economic india middle east europe economic corridor was announced during the g20 and i told you who are the um, uh, the signatories of the mou so what exactly is this project about now the proposed uh, m i IMEC will consist of a rail road ship to rail networks and road transport routes that will cover across two corridors that is the east corridor from india to the arabian gulf and the northern corridor that will connect the gulf to europe so the link starts from uh, mumbai port in india all the way to uae and covering even saudi arabia uh, israel up to greece and further in making inroads into europe so it has two corridors east corridor and the northern corridor now the imec corridor will also include an electricity cable a hydrogen pipeline and a high speed data cable signatories i already told you and the ports are many ports are going to be connected in this way so mundra and gujarat kamla and gujarat jawahar lal nehru port trust in navi mumbai and in the middle east you have Puj- fujaira jabal ali or abu dhabi in uae daman ras al khair in saudi arabia there will be a railway line that will connect the fujaira uae port to haifa in israel via saudi arabia uh, which will connect the gubai fat and and uh, hara uh, the uh, the hara port and also jordan in israel haifa port will be connected and all the way to europe from G- greece italy and all the way uh, and france and many other countries further so the objective is therefore to create a comprehensive transportation network which will uh, be multimodal contr- uh, comprising a rail a road and sea routes and connecting india and the middle east along to europe it aims to enhance the transporting efficiency reducing the cost increasing economic unity among these countries and also generating employment which is export oriented it also has a hydrogen pipeline therefore it also seeks to reduce greenhouse gas emissions it is expected to transform the integration of asia europe and middle east by facilitating trade and connectivity the significance says that upon completion it would be a reliable and a cost effective cross border ship to rail transit network to supplement the existing maritime and the road transports so what exactly are the geopolitical and the economic implications are they any if uh, if they are uh, of this east coast uh, east uh, coast and europe economic corridor so first of all it seeks to thwart the china's belt and road initiative in the eurasian region it serves to counterbalance china's growing interest in economic and political influence in this region especially historical uh, with the uh, with the this region having strong ties with us and therefore now us and other countries want to dominate this area the project can seen as strengthening of ties and integration across continents and civilizations that were already connected once once during the ancient civilization it offers a strategic opportunity to us to maintain its initiative influence uh, up, uh, along with this initiative and reassure traditional partners especially amidst china's growing influence in the region 
and it will also bypass Pakistan, breaking its veto over India's overland connectivity to the West, a hurdle presently being faced in the, uh, by our neighbour Pakistan. With our neighbour Pakistan, the corridor also deepens India's strategic engagement with the Arabian Peninsula by establishing due to, uh, establishing enduring connectivity and elevating the pol political and strategic links in the region. It will promote inter-regional connectivity and reduce political tensions in the Arabian Peninsula. So it will have it will not only be a transshipment hub but also there will be high rise business in the ports of these areas and also the forward and linkage uh, backward uh, businesses connected to the exports and imports will also get a boost infrastructure will boost the region uh, the uh, the the region uh, because of this project the corridor's model could be extended up to africa taking it further aligning it with the us and eu's plan to develop a trans african corridor on the same lines it also signifies india's intent to strengthen its connectivity and engagement with africa uh, to contribute to the economic development and also to have a win win situation as well Economically, we will have in enhanced trade uh, connect, uh, trade ties and opportunities with these countries. So, the IMEC provides a transformative opportunity for India to boost its economic trade by enhancing trade connectivity with the key regions. The route will significantly reduce the transit time, making uh, trade with Europe 40% faster compared to the Suez Canal. And we can bypass the Suez Canal actually because of this trade route. It will stimulate industrial growth. The corridor will create efficient transportation of network and seamless movement of goods. It will encourage industrial growth, particularly in the regions connected with the corridor and also companies will find it very, very easier to transport raw materials. There will be job creation, as I told you, and also there will be a demand for skilled and unskilled worker promoting employment. The corridor will facilitate, sec facilitate securing energy and resource supplies, especially in the Middle East and also from the Middle East to the US. Europe and also the Asian regions. Reliable access to these resources will stabilize India's energy sector, supporting its growing economy. And it will facilitate the development of special economic zones. And this was told by our very own Ministry of Commerce itself. So the corridor will be strategically leveraged to develop special economic zones along its route. These can attract foreign investment, promote manufacturing and drive economic growth in this region. It's nothing but a pathway to a wider market more business opportunities, more investments, more employment and more, more growth along with sustainability because you have sustainable energy resources also as a part of this project. So these are some of the important points with regard to India Middle East uh, Europe Economic Corridor, which is being promoted now and the visiting uh, Greece Prime Minister who was on visit to India inaugurated the Ricina Dialogue, called on India to utilize it as a gateway to Europe and speed in and fasten the implementation of this corridor. But however, this corridor is not without any glitches. Uh, Greece and Turkey have certain issues with regard to port access. These things will have to be looked into because Turkey also has a very important role to play in this corridor and Turkey has already made it very vocal that no corridor can be successful without the participation of Turkey. So it's all expectations high with regard to this corridor, especially seen as a uh, as a counterpart or as a competition to the China's incre increasing influence through the Belt and Road Initiative and also the China-Pakistan economic uh, corridor as well. So I hope these important points were really helpful to you all. And if you did, please do like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to comment at the end of the video. And I shall see you in my next post. Until then, it's very happy learning.